think it's the bee I actually, pollinates the flower, and then the bird comes in and eats out of the flower, so that's like the egg. The list is here. The list is here. The list is there. Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Don't the me. most dangerous Asian podcast in America. What we are about to do is present to you guys a list of 20 things, 20 good things about being Asian. The reason why we're making this list is because, uh, you know, through Asian memes, a lot of people are having this conversation about how different it is growing up Asian. You know, we're all laughing at it. You know, there's tons of content on the internet about it. And basically, a lot of people feel like that growing up, there was no benefits to being Asian in America, or very few. Being different in an environment is just a catalyst for either good things or bad things. And, and we're not saying that there are not negatives or not struggles with being Asian in the Western world, but we gotta have a positive look at things because 2019, Dave, we're starting it off with positivity, man. We are the people from the East, but we live in the West. Here are the 20 best things about being Asian. Number one, woo, there are diverse foods available to you as an Asian person yeah. that are arguably the best in the entire world. As you guys know, Asian cuisine is just overall delicious. And a lot of top level chefs around the world that are non-Asian look at Asian cuisine and, and they just, they, they adore it. So delicious, I feel like an animal. Where have you been all my life? Yes. They put it on a pedestal because they know the diversity, the flavors, the ingredients, the techniques is crazy. There is this like connection that you feel towards the Asian culture and connecting with the divine in all of us. You know, and that's what we're saying. The good thing is you're kind of born into it, okay? And also, you kind of get adventurous points because you're used to eating weird stuff. Sashimi, uni, durian, chicken feet, pork blood, blood sausages. Oh, God. <clears throat> that, that stuff, honestly, on paper does not sound good. But if you've ever had it, it can be very delicious. Number, Number two. 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 Usually, the inside of an Asian household is very clean because... Nobody is allowed to wear shoes inside. Yes, I am a big proponent of not wearing shoes in the house. Here's what doesn't make sense. And I always, this always got my undies in a bunch. <laughs> no, this really always got me where it was people like, oh, they want to wear shoes in the house. Oh, I'll just vacuum it. That's how it's clean. I'm like, do you know how many germs are on the bottom of your shoes? Like, there's a whole point and reason to why we wear shoes because they're meant for the outside to protect uh, your feet no, from I disgusting would, germs. I would. We have the same carpet at our house for almost 30 years and it's because we don't wear shoes in the house. Toys, take off your, your shoes. shoes. Number three, the third best thing about being Asian is there's a strong emphasis on family structure. Uh, generally, Asians come from very tight-knit families. This is true for a lot of immigrant cultures. So two types of Asian families. One, where they're around their extended family. And then the two, the second one is that they're not. Either way, the immediate family unit is always going to be pretty tight-knit. Yo, honestly, Asian families, because to be honest, as immigrants, our parents, a lot of them are not as social as other people because there's not as many people to socialize with. in the community because you're different and you're an immigrant. So really they make the family kind of the place where you hang out a lot. So you actually spend a, a lot of time hanging out with your parents. I would imagine that me and you spent more time with our parents growing up than anybody else that was non-Asian and maybe it wasn't part of their religion. I do think like Mormon kids spend a lot of time with their parents too. My 32 year old son Jeremy lives at home with his father and I. Number four, you have unique physical traits as an Asian. Straight black hair, Ooh. jet black hair, dark as a Sharpie marker. Like Andrew, if I took a Sharpie marker yeah. and I colored your hair, it won't even look any no, different. No, no, no. I, I hear some unique physical traits, I believe, that run true Are for being Asian. Generally Asian. You generally have less body odor. That's a fact, you have less sweat glands. I mean, a little less body hair too. Yeah, you have lots of collagen in your skin, you look young. Yeah. Straight jet black hair. You're super tall. Just kidding. Um, one, the things that are generally considered benefits are the lack of body odor and the collagen in our skin to look young. So the fifth reason why it's great to be Asian is if you are down to look into other Asian cultures, there is an endless amount of diversity within Asia. I mean, some Asians look like this. Some Asians look like that. Some Asians look like this. Some Asians look like that. There's but we all will generally 
with very little exception, eat noodles yeah. and take our shoes off. And rice. Is, is yeah, noodles, problem. rice, and we'll take our shoes off. Number six, you get to align yourself with a lot of cool, trendy things from Asia, and it's not weird. In fact, it's very acceptable, and to even a lot of other people, it makes sense. Yes. All right, so as you guys know, a lot of Asians, a lot of stuff from Asia popping right now, whether that be the music scene, the movie scene, the food scene, the... I mean, the cartoon, anime, manga, it's been going on for many years. And I think being an Asian, you feel comfortable diving into it. Yeah, whether it's the beauty queens from Southeast Asia or obviously the animes coming out of Japan or um, all the pop music that's coming out of Korea and China's coming up with its pop music culture. There's just or so many martial things. arts. Yeah. Like you can get into uh, martial man, arts I've been keeping up with what's coming out of Vietnam. Like, you know, I think Vietnam's coming up pretty hard. Indonesia's popping. Singapore, obviously. Crazy Rich Asians was based in Singapore. All right, number the seventh reason why it's good to be Asian is you have multiple names. Yes, you not you have your English name, you have your middle name, which is often your Asian name, and then obviously if there's different dialects of your name. Like I grew up getting called David, Davy, D. That's like on the English side, right? And then Taiman, D one, Manzai. I think that also you develop a knack for saying weird ethnic names. Or also, I would say um, you just kind of have this desire to get it right. Because people oftentimes say your name incorrectly. Please welcome the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazim. Or say Asian names poorly that you feel bad. You're like, well, even though this uh, Swedish guy has like the two dots in his name, like I still want to try to say it correctly. Right. So it makes you, gives you a little bit more empathy for people with accents very thick accent or mispronunciation mispronunciation i'm not gonna laugh at people that makes sense do you remember that one time we were at applebee's and then uh she was like uh the lady was like mom was like well, what should i get and the lady's like uh we have a nice mandarin salad right here with the wontons and i just remember being like why would you say it no like, you know what they're it? white too i can't put that on applebee's lady. we was at kachina kachina oh man so that's i yeah, think that chain closed down shout out to y'all yeah, no, yeah that's why yo, applebee's yo. is cool applebee's, yeah, yeah, cool. applebee's they wouldn't do that, they wouldn't do that. Apple, asian salad with the wontons you know, you know what why so, would you say it wontons you know what you know what it, i think happened because she she does not say those words very often uh number eight everyone that is asian is into metropolitan culture nice food nice brands fancy city people things generally like yeah. nobody's gonna be aggressively rural I, I got asian friends whose families are, are still pretty rural and uh, um you know like to do the a lot of the blue collar farming things. fishing but they're not against moving up that's the thing asians love to move up so yeah. if you get a nice house nice car nice bag i don't even care if your I, family loves mm -hmm. just loves to fish in the in the lake behind you no they, no no, no. It's like, they it, like it, the nice no, things it's like, asia typically came from a hierarchical king structure like there was like emperors and kings in, in every, every country in every asian country and to actually if you look at some asian countries there's still emperors and kings uh so there was this like exaltation of like fancy proper aristocrat life gold a lot of gold man people Asi yo asians love old, ornate gold i don't care what asian country it is they love ornate gold we love the gold number nine one of the best things about being asian living in the west is that you could trick non-asian people into thinking you are any type of asian changing slowly but non-asian people kind of think everybody in the asian silo looks the same well that's one of the it's just funny and yeah. one you can blend in this is a benefit because you don't have to explain being a different asian is good for different circumstances for example i want to convince people i'm a sick ass b-boy boom don't want to be in yeah. filipino oh boom you want me to think i know about technology i might just bust out one of these japanese you magazines. invented the technology right, when we were growing up Andrew, if me and you opened up a karate taekwondo and kung fu studio we could have maybe just winged it for a while man <laughs> the number 10 reason why it's cool to be asian is you will always have a sense of humor about yourself your culture and your family because it was different growing up it was different from the mainstream american dominant narrative and i do think when i say have a sense of humor that does not mean in a malicious derisive negative condescending way i do think some people think that sometimes but come on man it's like you know what i mean anytime like you know me and andrew used to call things jalapenos until we was like 15 because i don't know 
Everybody in my family calls them jalapenos. You gotta have fun with it. You can't take it too seriously when you feel like your parents cannot grasp or adapt to Western culture yeah, completely. I mean, they just, they're just really not, cute. Uh, they're not gonna understand it completely if they're from another place. So you just kind of have to like, like have fun with it. Jalapenos. There's jalapeno. chipotles. Yo, yo, there's mom, mom, our mom could not say chipotle. Still cannot say chipotle. She says chipotle. chipotle. I want, you guys want to go eat at chipotle? Uh, but but it's like no, I don't I, know. It's just like <laughs> my da dad could not say uh, prayer. prayer. He would say player. So okay, everybody say a player. Let's say yo, David Robinson, Michael Jordan. Say a player. Number eleven. You get to talk about some medicinal herbs and odd smelling ingredients that sound adventurous and cool, like you're in the know. Yo, also these soups. Every every Asian kid has at some point eaten what you could consider. A mystical soup. Yeah. Like, you were talking about ginseng. We're talking about black skin chicken. We're talking about goji berries. And I'm sure there are a ton nuts. from other cultures that uh, we're missing. But basically, if you're sick, depending on how traditional your parents are, they will cook you some sort of like old school soup from the motherland. I'm going to ask the cook to make you some herbal soup. You kind of get to be, and this is going to sound funny, kind of like a spy. <laughs> because people don't identify you with one country strong enough. They're like, well, you're, you are you look Chinese, but you are you really with China? And yeah, you speak English like an American. You say you're American, but really, come on, how down with America are you? English school, raised in China. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm fluid, man. I go back and forth, man. Um, number 14, you get to act uniquely different in an Asian restaurant or Asian setting. So for example, if you're in a Japanese spot, Japanese manners come more into play. If you are at a Chinese spot, you know, Chinese ways of doing things come more into play. And Andrew, as you know me, I take full advantage of this. Yes. When you're in a spot where it feels comfortable enough to get up and stretch using space around you, you do it. And I you will would, stretch in a Chinese spot. You would not do that at like a Western spot. In Asian culture, stretching is very good for your body, and it's very normal. And very like, important oh. for like, Oh, yeah, you're just trying to uh, uh, get more chi flow. Number 15, you might not need to buy as much alcohol because a lot of us are lightweights. All right. get By easily. the way, I'm not saying that all Asians are lightweights. No. I'm not saying they don't go ham on the Henny and the Remy. And the... At least in, when it comes to volume, Asians are not 10, 15 pint pounders. Well, obviously, a lot of us, too, is that we turn red. Yeah. A lot of us. So so not all Asians turn red, but as you guys know, at probably any given Asian party, I don't care what type of Asian you are, somebody's turning red really quickly. Yo, did you see that? I saw that one meme on subtle Asian traits where somebody's using a gigantic, like, Asian soup spoon to drink liquor out of. And it was so funny because that reminds me of those old Asian um, historical movies where oh. people drink wine out of like this like barrel with yeah, like this the lord label. like they're they're throwing oh, it dude. back number 16 the 16th reason it is great to be asian is because you're not necessarily involved in the epic rivalries that define western civilization so we come from the east to the west but maybe we uh either you know say hey man we're good with everybody or i see what you're saying i see what you're saying and i think there's points to be made on all sides and you know a little bit we try to step into a, a little bit of harmony hey we value being harmonious. Grey Goose versus Ciroc. Jameson versus Henny. Or Henny versus Remy. Uh, or, uh, no, Savoy versus Green Zone. Hi, <laughs> not chicken. Um, Kangadong versus... Uh, no, no, no. All you can eat Korean barbecue versus a la carte. <laughs> <laughs> Asians. Number 17. Why is it good to be Asian? Wow, we're already at 17 reasons. I think a lot of people thought that there was only five. Depending on what path you choose in life, you could be underrated and an underdog. And I do think that um, when you're underrated and an underdog, it makes you more motivated. It makes you more focused because you have something to prove. And you surprise people. Yeah. Constantly surprising people. Now, obviously, no one wants to start off being an underdog or underrated. Everybody would like to start off, you know, at a privileged position, but that's not the case for everybody. So what we're saying is, I know, even in my own experience and our own experience, constantly surprising people about being Asian. 
Jeremy Lin, for example, and every Asian athlete that's made a breakthrough actually kind of benefited from being the underdog and people not expecting anything. You boys are so lucky to have an Asian pro athlete to look up to. Number 18, you will be free from certain awkward conversations with your parents. All right, because as you guys know, in traditional Asian households, communication is not like the number one priority. At least not a Western style. Yeah, definitely not a Western style of communication. So you guys will not have conversations about the birds and the bees. Yeah, maybe about the birds and the bees. And well, I, I don't think my dad could come up with that analogy. I even know. What is the analogy? What the bird? Did the bird have sex with the bee? Like what happened? <laughs> the bee pollinates. No, no. Uh, I, I think I, it's, I think it's the bee I pollinates see. the flower, and then the bird comes in and eats out of the flower. So that's like the egg. Number nineteen, guys. One of the best things about being Asian is Asian babies are super cute. Yeah, our babies are cute. I think hands down, everybody thinks Asian babies are cute. You're saying people say that. Dude. People Not say it. that all the time. Like, you know how many uh, white girls in my life have actually told me, Andrew, we should make babies because they'll be so cute. And you know how many babies I actually have? I have zero babies. I've made zero babies with these people. Anyways, it's just a fantasy for them. Number 20th, the last reason why it's good or cool to be Asian is Asian stuff coming up 2019. Or I, I, I think Asian culture and Asian faces are more acceptable and embraced in modern society around the world. It's not great yet. It's not perfect. There's always complaints. There's always struggles. But overall, man, compared to 10 years ago, I do think that Asians are trending upwards. I do think there's a lot of things that people can learn from Asians. I do think there's a lot of things that Asians can learn from other people as well. Yeah. But what we wanted to do was just look at the positive side. I think there's so much talk about, oh, how being uh, Asian is a struggle or, oh, we're underrated or blah, blah, blah. We don't get this and that. But there's just a more positive way to look at things. And that's how we wanted to start off the year. So that was 20 reasons why it's good to be Asian. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that video. That is the 20 reasons why it's good to be Asian. Please let us know in the comment section below what are some additional ones, some ones we didn't think of, and what other lists you would like to see us do. We are bringing the Asian list back. Bizak. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. We are the Fun Brothers. My name is David. I'm Andrew. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. You better get on those 2019 Japanese brands, Lexus, Acura. Hey. Toyotas. I, I would say they this. Looking, you know, every Japanese brand is looking futuristic. Dog, the new Civics and Accords from Honda this year look like futuristic rockets. And honestly, it looks weird if anybody else but an oh, Asian's driving yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding.